Good afternoon. Well, this is afternoon where I'm at. Anyway, your textbook over with teaching the basics of what we use in a classroom. For example, the standards, different forms of assessment, activities, rubrics, how you're going to do it all. The rest of it is actually a wonderful reference book for you to utilize. Um, so I just want to go through it a little bit and then um, I will ask you to do some things for this week. All right, in the first, it says part two. So that starts on page 129. And part two goes through every single um, science section that you would probably teach in elementary grades. And that would be the first one is on Earth and Space Science. And so if we look at it, when we open it up, there's this wonderful um, timeline of look at chapter seven. The learning objectives are basically like, do you know? It's a wonderful little reference book now. So it says, describe ways the geosphere, the biosphere, hydrosphere, and or atmosphere interact to affect the Earth's materials and processes. And then describe how plate tectonics explain the development and ongoing changes of the Earth's surface. And then explain how solar energy, convection currents, and density influence ocean currents. And last, but explain how the effects of weathering or the rate of erosion by water, ice, wind, and vegetation contribute to, contribute to the recycling of Earth's materials. So this particular book from now on is a reference book of, of material or whatever. And they have, um, there's a lot. There's absolutely a lot. And then... I found out that they have in the back of the book and called Appendix A, I believe. I don't have a bookmark right now, but we're going to get to it. Appendix A is all about putting the content into action. I know. Amazing. Amazing. So here is, um, has some unit plans and questions. For um, for example, we have a unit tile, our earth changes. Is the earth the same place today as it was yesterday, last year, when I was born, when the dinosaurs roamed? And then using observations over a short period, along with photographs, illustrations, and interviews for long periods. It gives you so much. I wish ideas. Yep. It also gives us ideas for bulletin boards and field trips. And then... It gives us examples of topics and phenomena, like how to do different activities. Um, this is for night and day. Um, earthquakes. On this page over here, a sedimentary rock formation, an, an idea how to do that. And it's it has all of things that you and I could use in our classroom. And I look at some of these things, and um, like this one, you're thinking, oh my gosh, it's going to be so hard. But how to find relative humidity? We always think, well, what is relative humidity? Here is a purpose. A small board or heavy piece of cardboard. Um, relative humidity table. Oh, you go, what's a relative humidity table? And look, they give it to us. And they have all this information. And then they have questions for us to ask the students. This is really a wonderful you want for earth science because earth science I will admit is really hard to find activities for the students to do in the classroom it seems like well we can't go out and look at a can't go down to the black hills and look at folded mountains and you know we can't travel here but we can take some of that out there and bring it into our classroom um, I think this is a valuable resource for us so I just wanted to point that out to you and let you know that I'm going to be probably asking if you would like to do something in your classroom. If you're working with students, take one of these activities and utilize it with them. Develop it. Make it your own. Add your own questions. You know your kids. And develop this and use those different um, subjects or areas of science to find good activities for the students so they can have hands-on, they can have an experience in what it is actually all about. So that's what this week is going to be on, 
is on earth and space science. And with that being said, if you have an earth or space science, if you have a teacher in your school that is teaching earth, any earth science, any form of earth science, whether it be high school or um, middle school, or take some time and observe them in their classroom and use that for one of your classroom observations. Um, they might have an activity, especially activity realm. I know that in our in my school that a lot of the elementary teachers are asking for us, my colleague and I, to um, have opportunities for their little people uh, to come up in the high school and see what we're doing. So, and doing activities and hands-on because it's really, really is where the learning is at, I believe. And so, if you can utilize one of these activities or make it your own or find out and just reference it in your um, in your work or whatever um, I'm I, I would love to see some of the artifacts to, to see if you can utilize it in there sometime and um, and and have some artifacts of what the students did I think that would be um, something that we could all share. I might put that on the discussion board. I still don't know if that is the right thing to do or if I should just send out a meeting time for us to do a Zoom. But I know all of you are working somewhere and um, it's not always so easy for us to get together. Um, I think I'm going to put out a, uh, a form and have you fill it out to see if we can get together um, either on Zoom or um, maybe in person at the Mulberg site, if that would work for you. And I know uh, for Jessica, that's not going to work. Um, that's just too great of a distance for you to drive down. But if we can work something out, I would love to do that. Um, but in the meantime, I guess it's going to be show and tell. Um, the reason I'd like us to meet is so that we can see what each one of us is doing and that maybe we can have that conversation of how I can utilize that in my classroom or how it could be changed or how it could be, or maybe it, say this is not the one I want. That's not happen, but, or that is exactly what I thought was going to happen. I can see they got the standard. Um, what We need to learn how to reflect on what we're teaching. So one way to try it, and I, that's why I love hands-on activities, because the kids love doing the hands-on activities. And if they don't get the standard you want them to teach it, they're not upset about it because they got to do something. But And you can modify it and tweak as you go. So there's always opportunity for all of us to learn on that. With that being said, I'm going to let you go and um, have some look-see at this. And your assignments are going to be pick two of them, up your own activities, and share of how you're going to use it in the classroom. And then I would like you to have your students or someone, your children or someone, um, do the activity for you. And so you have some artifacts to see what's happening and in, in their learning and see if that activity really is addressing that particular standard, really is addressing a skill that you want them to learn.